This is Domenico and uh, with Easynomics, and we're going to cover a macro topic, the short run and long run Phillips curve. And our applied example, we've seen this before, but we'll just use the same example because it does a, a great job of illustrating the ideas behind the short run Phillips curve and the long run Phillips curve, is uh, the housing bubble and 2008 economic crisis of 2008. So here we have a home price index from 1890 on to 2005. And we can see how housing prices really began to boom in the lead up to the 2008 economic crisis as a result of increasing aggregate demand leading to demand pull inflation. Um, and that was a result of expansionary monetary policy from the central bank. Interest rates were relatively low for too long people were borrowing and uh, speculating and buying housing. So short run Phillips curve, we need two graphs side by side. The short run Phillips curve though, let's make a few notes about it. The short run Phillips curve assumes that there is a trade-off between two variables, the variable of inflation and unemployment. And it assumes a negative relationship between the two. So if inflation is rising, excuse, excuse my son, he's here by, besides me, sorry. <laughs> uh, as inflation is rising, unemployment is falling, or as uh, inflation is falling, unemployment is rising. So we assume that there's a negative relationship between these two variables in the short run. But in the long run Phillips curve, that negative relationship is broken and we can have inflation and unemployment rising at the same time. Inflation could be rising and unemployment could be rising. And this was Contrary to many Keynesian economists in the 50s and 60s, Keynesian economists said that this was basically impossible. You could not have inflation and unemployment rising at the same time. But with the 1973 oil shock, it broke the Keynesian model uh, and broke this assumption with the short run Phillips curve that there was a trade off, that you can actually have inflation and unemployment rising at the same time. So let's go ahead and illustrate this through the above model so we can understand that trade-off and how it is broken in the short run. Okay, so in order to uh, analyze this for a paper exam, we've got to have these two graphs side by side. Graph A is the short run Phillips curve along with the long run Phillips curve. Graph B is using the Matris model and here we're going to be creating and eliminating an inflationary gap. We've seen this before, but we're going to use it with the short run Phillips curve. The short run Phillips curve uh, is uh, measuring unemployment on the x axis and inflation on the y axis. The short run Phillips curve has this downward sloping curve labeled SRPC for short run Phillips curve with a perfectly inelastic long run Phillips curve. And we're going to assume that the LRPC is essentially the same, similar to the long run aggregate supply curve in terms of the natural rate of unemployment, the long run level, uh, the, uh, the long run average level of unemployment in an economy. So in the United States, it's approximately about 5%. Okay. So we'll have the intersection of SRS1 with 81 and LRS at point A. We're at full potential GDP, we're at full employment, or the natural rate of unemployment, 5%, with a price level at PL1. And on the Phillips curve, we're at point A, intersecting with the long run Phillips curve, with, which provides unemployment at 5%, and perhaps a moderate level of inflation at 1%. Okay? So let's go ahead and illustrate uh, the years before the 2008 economic crisis. So we know that AD equals consumption plus investment plus government spending plus net exports. The Federal Reserve Bank, the central, uh, this, the central bank in the United States uh, 
was engaging in expansionary monetary policy. So the interest rates were low, which encouraged households to borrow and spend in buying housing and encourage uh, businesses to also borrow since the economy was doing quite well and invest. So consumption spending was rising, investment spending was rising as a result of the low interest rates. And that causes the aggregate demand curve to increase. So we'll have it shift out from 81 to 82. All right, maybe uh, let's see if I can draw that here. No. So here we have 82. That's leading to a degree of demand pull inflation. As 80 shifts out, we're getting demand pull inflation. We get a new equilibrium. We're entering an inflationary gap, so I'll call this Y inflation. And we have a price level rising. This is the demand pull inflation from PL1 to PL2. So we're at point A going to point B. Because of the increased aggregate demand, firms are increasing their quantity of supply and as they increase their quantity supply, they are employing more labor. So labor is falling, uh, or unemployment is falling from five to, let's say, 3%, okay? So times are quite good. It's a, it's a boom period. People are getting employed. Um, firms are hiring. It's a good moment. How does that translate to the short run Phillips curve? Any shift in the aggregate demand curve will lead to a movement along the short run Phillips curve. So here we see rising inflation and we see falling unemployment. So we're going from point A to perhaps here point B. And we have the unemployment rate falling from five to 3%. And we have an increase in inflation from one to let's say Let's just say 2%. Okay? So we can see how these two graphs um, relate to each other. We're going from point A to point B in the Montrose model, which is a movement along the short run Phillips curve from point A to point B. But when we enter that inflationary gap, labor is becoming scarce. And as labor becomes scarce, firms are competing with each other to hire the last remaining units of labor. And in order to acquire that labor, they might have to offer higher wages. So wages might be rising. And as wages rise, that causes the cost of production to increase. So the short run Phillips curve is going to shift in to point C. So short run Phillips curve shifts in. I'm sorry, not short run Phillips curve, short run aggregate supply, SRAS shifts in from SRS1 to SRS2. We are going from point A to point B, and now to point C, which is cost push inflation, All right? Um, when SRS shifts in, it's kind of a cost push inflation scenario. So we have an increase in the price level from PL1 to PL2, now to PL3 as a result of cost push inflation costs of resources rising because they're becoming scarce. And as uh, those resources become more expensive, um, firms will not be able to employ as much labor as before. And so uh, unemployment will rise back to 5% because labor is just becoming too expensive. They can't afford as many units of labor, so they're gonna have to fire some labor. The higher price level, also leads to a decrease in the quantity of aggregate demand from point B to point C. And then we end up right back at the natural rate or at the long run aggregate supply curve. How does that translate in the Phillips curve? So whenever SRS shifts, in this case, when it shifts in, the short run, average, short run Phillips curve will shift out. And so here it's going to shift to this point. Short run Phillips curve two. So we're going from A to B to point C. And at point C, we see that 
unemployment is rising. It's going from 3% to 5%, but we also have inflation from PL2 to PL3, which is reflected here. Perhaps we have inflation now at 4%. Okay, so that is the relationship between the Phillips curve and this monetarist model. So let's go ahead and analyze this as we would on a paper exam. As can be seen, we have two graphs illustrating the relationship between the short and long-run Phillips curve and the monetarist model. Graph A is illustrating the short and long-run Phillips curve, while graph B is illustrating the monetarist model where we are creating and eliminating an inflationary gap. In the uh, short run, um, in, sorry, in graph A, we're measuring on the x-axis unemployment and we're measuring inflation on the y-axis. In the monetarist model, graph B, we're measuring real GDP on the x-axis and price level on the y-axis. In graph A, we have a perfectly inelastic long-run Phillips curve labeled LRPC. And we have a type of kind of downward sloping short run Phillips curve labeled SRPC1. In graph B, we have a perfectly inelastic long run aggregate supply curve and a downward sloping aggregate demand curve labeled AD1 and an upward sloping short run aggregate supply curve labeled SRES1. So in graph B, where LRES equals AD, equals SRES at point A. It establishes an equilibrium price level at PL1 with real GDP output at YP or full potential GDP. We're at full employment. We're at the natural rate of unemployment, which is about 5% in the United States. Point A translates to graph, graph A because where the short run Phillips curve, SRPC1, intersects with the LRPC curve at point A. We're at the natural rate of unemployment of 5% with an inflation rate of 1%. As a result of expansionary monetary policy, where the central bank has kept interest rates low, that leads to households and firms borrowing and spending money. So there's increased consumption spending, increased investment spending, Thus, aggregate demand shifts out from 81 to 82, providing a new equilibrium at point B, where 82 equals SRS1, providing an equilibrium price level at PL2. So we see demand pull inflation, since inflation is rising from PL1 to PL2. And we have entered an inflationary gap with real GDP at Y inflation, which is greater than um, YP. In addition, since there's increased aggregate demand, firms are increasing the quantity of their aggregate supply, so they're hiring more units of labor, so unemployment falls from 5 to 3%. A shift in the AD curve leads to a movement along the short-run Phillips curve from point A to point B, and we see unemployment falling from 5% to 3%, and we see inflation rising from 1% to 2%. When we enter that inflationary gap, labor is becoming scarce, so firms begin to compete for the last remaining units of labor, and in order to acquire those units of labor, they have to offer a higher wage. So wages might be rising, which leads to an increase in the cost of production, causing the SRES curve to shift inward from SRES1 to SRES2, establishing a new equilibrium at point C where SRES2 equals 82, which equals LRES. Because labor is now more expensive and wages are rising, firms will have to fire some of that expensive labor. So unemployment increases from 3% to 5%. And at the higher price level of PL3, which again is a type of cost push inflation from PL2 to PL3, um, the higher price level causes the quantity of aggregate demand to decrease from Y inflation to YP or from point B to point C. When the SRES curve shifts in, it causes the short run Phillips curve to shift out from SRPC1 to SRPC2, where SRPC2 equals LRPC at point C, establishes a new equilibrium with unemployment rising back to the natural rate of 5% with additional inflation or caused by cost push inflation 
rising the inflation from 2% to 4%. So the moral of the story is that in the short run, yes, there's a trade-off between unemployment. But in this case, as labor becomes increasingly scarce, it causes the cost of production, labor, to rise which takes us right back to the natural rate of unemployment, as seen with the short-run films, we're shifting back out towards the natural rate of unemployment, where we see unemployment rising and inflation rising at the same time. So there's a trade-off in the short run, but in the long run, we can get inflation and rising unemployment at the same time. And that is the point of this model. If you have any questions, feel free to comment and don't forget to subscribe or like. Thank you so much. Take care and bye-bye.